Cool. You ready? Let's see if I don't fuck this up. Hey everyone, my name is Gabriel and I'm a black and gray tattoo artist out of San Diego, California, and this is my YouTube channel. You can find me on Instagram under Gallo Santiago, but for today what we're gonna be doing is a Q&A video um, with some of the questions that I got off of Instagram. So if you guys are ready, let's get started and let's go ahead and roll that intro. All right guys, so before we get started, I just wanna say that most of these things are gonna be in my opinion. They're not fact and they're not right or wrong. And I'm just answering the best way that I can based off of my you know, way of working. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now there are some questions that I couldn't answer in a quick Q&A video. And as far as those questions go, um, I'm probably gonna be making videos to answer those in the future. So if you submitted a question that maybe is a little bit more detail oriented, then I will probably be making a video on that soon. But let's get in with the first question. All right, the first question is probably my favorite question, which is what motivates me? That's kind of a difficult question to answer and at the same time it's not. Um, I'm motivated because in my life I came from very little and I always wanted to do better with myself. And so as far as motivation goes for me, it's just trying to constantly evolve, trying to be the best version of me that I can be, um, which is changing constantly. Um, and I, I'd say what motivates me is me and where I came from and trying to just create a better life for myself and then potentially, you know, a better life for a family in the future. But for the most part, I'm just trying to be the best me that I can be. And that's what motivates me the most. The next question I have is what inspires me? Now, that's a little different than what motivates me, but um, it's, it's a really good question. And as far as what inspires me, I get a lot of inspiration from YouTube. And that's actually why I'm making this channel. There's some amazing people, whether they're artists or just vloggers or whatever you want to you know, look for on YouTube, you can find some amazing people doing some amazing stuff. And I tend to look for those people a lot. And you know, those are the ones that I use as reference when I'm making all this footage, when I'm trying to figure out how to go about starting this channel. And I think that's been the one thing that's been inspiring me the most. Um, the other thing that's been inspiring me a lot you know, throughout my path as a tattoo artist are other people that started off similar to me. For a lot of people that don't know me, um, I started off in a garage. I started off tattooing my cousins and people from the neighborhood. Not very many, and it's not the right way to start, but it's the way I started for the most part until I got an apprenticeship. So when it comes to inspiration, seeing other artists that started the same way as me and either are farther or still working along their path, that really, that really inspires me. So yeah, that's what inspires me. Now the next question I got is something that I probably can't fully answer, um, which is how much do I charge? I don't charge by the hour. Um, you know, that's I had a couple of different ways that they asked that question, whether it was how much do you charge by the hour or how much do I charge? Um, I charge by the piece and that's, you know, it's one of those things that kind of varies. So one thing that I suggest you guys do as you start going farther into your photorealism career is only giving a rough estimate because it's impossible to really gauge how long it's gonna take you to do something unless you've done that same tattoo on that same body part thousands of times. And even then it's still gonna vary depending on people's skin. So I suggest if you are giving your pricing a thought, um, you know, leave it a little bit open-ended, not to try to screw someone over in any way, but just to make sure that you don't get screwed over by giving a fixed price and then realizing that either the person is three times the size you thought they were, or maybe they just have horrible skin and you probably shouldn't be eating that time. You should be charging for the time that you're doing. And if it's something that's out of your control, like someone having bad skin or, um, you know, just someone not being able to sit, then you might want to consider charging a little bit for that time. So yeah, as far as charging goes and how much I charge, it constantly changes. I don't charge the same thing I charged last year and I won't charge the same thing I charge next year. So it's kind of hard for me to give you guys a price, but I'd say just charge what you feel like you're worth um, and making sure that you're trying to give yourself the best product and not only for your client, but for yourself. But yeah, so I hope that answers the question. Next question is gonna be, does my voltage vary depending on lining, shading, skin types? And honestly, it really doesn't. Um, I don't do any lining, so for starters, I don't do lining with my, um, with the machines that I do shading, I don't do lining. If I'm gonna do a hard outline, which I hardly ever do because I'm a black and gray photorealistic artist, um, then I'll pull out probably a Dan Cuban machine. I love that machine. I use it with you know traditional needle bar and whatever tubes that I have laying around, but if I'm gonna do lining, I'm gonna be using a Dan Cuban, and that one I run at a much slower voltage. But as far as my wands go, because I do use two different wands, 
I do change the voltage um, rarely, but I wouldn't even be able to tell you the circumstances. I usually run them pretty constantly. So I do run my shader at 8.1 and I run my packer at 6.1 and they pretty much stay there no matter what type of shading or grouping I'm doing or where I'm tattooing. Um, that, is that the right way? No, there's some amazing people that do move their voltage around depending on the body part, depending on a lot of factors, but for the most part, I keep them there. I will say that if you are going to be lining with a wand type machine, I would bring the voltage down a little bit, at least like one volt and see how that feels compared to what you would normally shade with it. But yeah, hopefully that helps out answer that question. Um, let's get on to the next one. Now the next question is probably my favorite question, which is how do you deal with back pain? And that's like a legit question because I've been doing this for 11 years going on 12 and my back is messed up. And so when it comes to that, I've tried different things. I've tried yoga, I've tried just stretching more, taking breaks more, but out of all those things, you know, the one thing that I'd say probably helps the most is lifting, uh, like work, working out, lifting weights. Um, and when I do lift, I do do more Olympic lifts. So do compound movements like snatches and clean presses and things like that. And the reason I like those more is they tend to work more body parts that are not so isolated and they tend to help me out more with my back when I'm tattooing because all these other little muscles are actually kind of engaged um, from the lifting area that support my back instead of just doing isolated movements. So for more, you know, back pain, when it comes to me, lifting has really helped out a lot. Also Brazilian Jiu Jitsu helped out a ton. I just don't get a chance to do it as much, but take care of your backs guys, get a good chair, uh, have a mobile station. If you watch one of my videos on, as far as the gear that I use, I have a mobile station, uh, make sure that you have a good comfortable chair and just make sure that you're making yourself as comfortable as you can. If the client's gonna be a little bit less comfortable than you, but you're gonna be more comfortable giving them a tattoo, you're probably gonna give them a better product. So I suggest making sure that you take the time to make sure that you're comfortable. Um, another good question that I got is how long are my sessions? Um, this is one thing that I would say as you get farther in your career, you want you might want to start setting a little bit more of a strict schedule for yourself. Um, so my schedule is 11 to 5. I'm a much more efficient tattooer than I'd say some of my peers, not to put them down. I just come in already having my stencil done, knowing what I'm going to do, and I spend a lot of time with my client on the phone ahead of time. Um, that's just the way that I like to work. And that makes it so when I get to the shop, I'm just there to do what I need to do, which is work and just have a great time doing it. Um, I don't have to waste a lot of time going over ideas or anything in front of my client and, or eating in front of my client. So um, when it comes to my sessions, I work 11 to five. I get started usually within about 30 to 45 minutes of them getting there and I stop right at five. If we have an hour left and we stop at five and there's an hour worth of work, well then they're gonna have to come back for another session. And that's important that you start valuing your time you know, in a way that you're gonna make sure that you get paid for what you need to get paid, but also you don't overexert yourself because you just don't wanna end up burning yourself out a lot sooner than you have to. And you also wanna make sure you're getting you know, paid for what you're working for. So um, I'm not gonna say everyone should do those hours. Those are just mine. And that's what this Q and A is about is, you know, what I do. Um, but I suggest start, you know, thinking about setting yourself a, a more strict regimen, you know, or a more strict schedule. This next question is really good, which is when do you upgrade from your cell phone to a mirrorless camera or a DSLR as far as your, you know, taking photos of your work? And I would say as soon as you possibly can. Having a mirrorless camera isn't about just photographing your work. Um, you know, I have my assistant or my apprentice take photos of me while I'm working. I, I take photos of just things throughout the day. And all those things are gonna be great for social media because it's gonna look more professional. So as soon as you're able to, I would suggest upgrading from your phone to a good camera. Um, I use a Sony a7C and a Sony a7 III and they're amazing cameras. Um, the lenses are expensive. I'd suggest if you're gonna get one camera and one lens, I would get the Sony a7C and the Sony 35 millimeter 1.8 lens. That's a lot of money right there, but it's gonna be a one-time investment. You know, they also have slightly cheaper options like the Sony a6600, and then you can still get the 35 millimeter and use it on that. But um, yeah, I suggest you know investing in a camera as soon as you're able to because it is going to give you a huge return. If you guys are seeing it on my page and asking me about it, then obviously it's you know it's something that you guys are you know appreciating. So I suggest you guys getting to that same level as soon as you can. Okay, so this one is what made me get into tattooing, and that's a really good question. You know, like people ask me all the time, like oh, like when did you just get into tattooing? And I wish I can say that there was a moment in my career where it just, you know, a switch flipped and I was all of a sudden a tattoo artist and had an apprenticeship or whichever way you want to look at it. But it wasn't the case. I spent a lot of my youth kind of lost. Like I didn't have direction. I didn't graduate high school. I, um, I jumped around from jobs. You know, I did so many different types of work. I was a mechanic. I did sales. Yeah, I have a weird background when it comes to my work career. But what I can tell you is I always felt like that was the direction I needed to go. I needed to work for myself. I needed to work with art. 
And, um, you know, growing up Hispanic, uh, you know, this might be, you know, some of you guys might relate to this and some of you might not, but growing up Hispanic the way that I did, it was something where you're not really taught to like, you know, oh, you can be an artist, you can make money, you can own your own business. You know, we're traditionally taught, you know, just work really hard and, you know, keep your head down and one day you might, you know, get promoted or, you know, be a manager or something like that. And so it took me a while to change my mindset when it comes to that mentality. And um, luckily, like the next generation is completely different from the way I was raised, or maybe you just had great parents. But for me, it took a while to get to a point where I was, you know, I had the mindset that, yeah, I could do something with myself like this. And once I realized I could and I started learning into, you know, different types of art, and then it was all history from there. So yeah, that's how I got into tattooing. Uh, the next question is a little random. Um, I, you know, I don't know why they asked it, but they asked how tall I am. And so, yeah, I'm not a big dude. I'm 5'9", probably like 155, 160 pounds. And yeah, I don't know. hope that helps. Another question that I've been getting that's a little bit harder for me to answer because I haven't set an official date is when my next seminar is going to be. So I'm going to be doing a seminar in January. I know that for sure. And I know that I'm going to be having the tickets go on sale early December. So basically next week they'll be going on uh, sale. They are very limited seating. This is an in-person one. So it's here in San Diego and it will only be 10 slots, maybe, maybe 12. I'm not sure, but I'll get the details worked out and I'll be posting that on my Instagram in the next couple days. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, go to my Instagram, keep an eye out for that, or you can just shoot me a DM and maybe I'll know by then. But the seminars are, you know, one or two days, I haven't decided yet, and they're pretty intense. It's a lot of information and people always leave really fucking stoked. And people always leave really stoked on what, you know, they gain from that seminar. Um, as far as pricing and all that, I'm going to figure all that out and I'm going to post it on my Instagram when I release the seminar seats. Um, but yeah. I hope you guys, you know, end up showing up or, you know, I will be doing an online one soon. So keep an eye out for that too. All right. And so the last question I'm going to answer, um, it's just the last one on the list is does the relationship between voltage and hand motion really matter? Or, you know, what is the relationship between them? That is a much more complicated answer. I'm sure I'll, you know, have a video on it, but yeah, generally, you know, people that move their hands a little bit faster will have a faster machine speed because they need to. If you move a little bit slower with a faster machine speed, you might chew up the skin. And generally uh, people with a slower machine speed will move their hands slower. Um, I, I wouldn't say there's a right or a wrong. In fact, honestly, I do both of them. I run my packer again at 6.1. And if I'm doing big areas of shading, I do run my hand a little bit, you know, slower. And if I'm using my shader, I run it at 8.1. Um, and so I end up, you know, running my hand a little bit faster just to, you know, go with the speed of the machine. So generally that's what people do. That's not always what people do, but that's generally what people do. And so, um, yeah, I'm sure I'll come up with a video on hand speed and all that stuff soon, but I wanted to just at least answer that best I can. All right, guys. So I really hope that you like this Q and A. It's something a little bit different. I know with last week, I wasn't able to put together this huge video, but sometimes it's something as simple as this might answer the question that you have that might take me weeks to make a video for. So I hope this was informative. I hope you guys had a good time. I will be posting a new video next week. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be most likely on needles or something a little bit more technical. I'll do another technique Tuesday. But um, yeah, if you guys have any other questions that maybe I didn't answer today, go ahead and leave it down in the comments below. If you like what you saw at all, give it a thumbs up. It really helps me know that I'm doing a good job. And if you want to see more content like this, I would suggest looking at the videos that I've posted in the last few weeks, but also subscribe. And that way you can see when I come out with new videos. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you guys so much for the support. And yeah, have a good one. Do I need a disclaimer? All right, am I good?